Hi, I'm Leslie Peterson. I'm the Alberta biologist with Trout Unlimited Canada. We're at Piper Creek in central Alberta. Did you know that Piper Creek was broken? Let me show you how we fixed it. Piper Creek is in central Alberta within the city of Red Deer. It's in an industrial area, so you can hear the sounds of heavy equipment working across the creek from us. Where we're standing today on the Piper Creek project site used to be used for agriculture. A farmer had built a crossing across the creek to get his heavy equipment and machines across the other side of the creek. The problem was the culverts were too small and there was a lot of debris that had been thrown into the creek and it was causing a lot of problems for the creek, for the water quality and for the fish passage and just for the overall health of the system. So we came in to help find some solutions to the problem and in 2016 that's exactly what we did. Behind me is where the crossing was on Piper Creek. It was a couple of undersized culverts that were crushed and not doing a good job at conveying water through them at all. There was also a whole bunch of rock and debris and concrete and other things to help cross the creek. So what we did is remove all of that stuff. We didn't need to keep a crossing here, which was great. We didn't have to look at a bridge or bigger culverts or anything like that. We could just literally tear everything up, rebuild the banks, let the creek do the work to heal itself. One of the problems with the culvert and the crossing was that there was too much dirt or sediment entering the creek. So generally too much sediment is bad for a creek for a few different reasons. It can interfere with how much light gets in the creek, which changes the productivity of the system. It can also interfere with animals and fish that breathe underwater with gills. And it can change the substrate or the bottom of the creek so that it might not be suitable for, for certain fish to spawn in certain areas if there's too much mud or sediment in the creek. So what we did was one, remove the crossing and then where there was bare ground on the banks, we planted a whole bunch of willows and other plants to make sure that the ground was covered, well vegetated, and that removes that source of sediment from getting into the creek. After we fixed the crossing, which was more of an acute problem on the creek, we took a step back and worked with our project partners to look at what are some of the other issues facing Piper Creek within this property. Um, so we worked with Red Deer, River Naturalists, Rethink Red Deer, Cows and Fish, the City of Red Deer, and one of the issues was just a general lack of plant diversity along the shoreline. So to improve that, uh, what we did is identify some places where we could do some cluster planting of some native trees and shrubs to help improve that diversity. And that ultimately is going to help improve water quality and habitat and structure, and it's going to benefit a wide variety of different species of wildlife that use Piper Creek. At the spot of the former crossing, you can really see how the creek is starting to heal itself. So what we did was remove the debris, remove the culverts, and create the conditions for the creek to build its banks back up. We did this by planting willows and removing the debris that was holding back the creek. And now it's depositing sediment where it's supposed to, and the willows have grown like crazy since we did this. One of the really cool things about our work at Piper Creek is that we were part of a larger initiative at this site called the Piper Creek Restoration Agriculture Project with a few different partners, including Rethink Red Deer. So also at this site, we have community gardens, there's a food forest that was planted a few years ago, and there's a pollinator garden and a whole bunch of other activities that, for the community. Um, so it's really neat to be part of something bigger. I hope you enjoyed learning about our project on Piper Creek here in Red Deer. These kind of projects are not possible without lots of other people helping out. So if you want to get involved, you can join, you can donate, or you can volunteer to help out on projects like this. You'll get your boots wet and your hands dirty and you can feel great about the work you're doing. If you want to learn more about our work across the country, check out our website at tucanada.org or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.